Last December, I published a blog post about how I'd completely moved away from Google Docs in favor of Notion. Google Docs is great, but I felt like I could never find what I was looking for. No matter if I tried folders or bookmarking files, it seemed like anything I put into Google Docs was absolutely lost after three or four months. It's been eight months since making that switch, and I'm here today to say it was one of the best decisions I've ever made. In fact, yesterday I posted inside the admin bar community a screenshot of how I've set things up inside Notion that's made it really easy for me to access all my docs at any given time. There was a ton of interest in that post, so we're here today to show you exactly how I've set it up, and I'm gonna show you how you can set one up just like it. But before we jump in, I wanna preface by saying this. What you can do inside a Notion is almost limitless. It's an absolutely incredible, powerful piece of software. However, I found that making things more complex didn't really improve my productivity. It gave me another full-time job of just managing Notion. So what I'm gonna show you today is very simple. It's intentionally simple. I had a very clear problem. I could not find my Google Docs easily. And I solved that by creating a simple workflow inside Notion that allows me to sort, filter, and search through my documents to easily find anything I need. There are a few other features inside of Notion that I do take advantage of. There's a lot of rich content that you can create inside of Notion. You can also nest pages and create templates, all of which I'll show you in this video. But before you jump into the comments and start telling me about all the features I could add to this board, remember that I'm purposefully trying to keep this very, very simple. All right, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at a demo account I set up. I'll show you around how everything works and then we'll go build the entire thing out from scratch. All right, so like I said, this is very simple. Essentially, all I have is one homepage that has three different databases included. There's one for companies, one for projects, and one for documents. Now, all of these things are important because they're all linked together. Every company that I work with or even any of my internal companies are located inside the companies folder. Each one of those companies get assigned projects. Each company can have multiple projects, but a project can only have one company it's assigned to. And lastly, each doc gets assigned to a project. All of this organization makes it really easy for me to be able to sort and filter things later on down the road. But before we get to that, let's take a look at what's set up in each one of these databases. Here inside the company's database, all I'm logging here is the company name, if it's an internal project, something of my own or a client project, and then it links to the projects it's associated with. Now, again, I'm not trying to create an entire project management system here, so I'm not logging things like the contact names or emails or website addresses or anything like that. All of that is inside my project management system. Inside the projects database, we're including the project title, it will link it to the company, and then you can see all the documents that are associated with the projects. Now, if all this doesn't make sense yet, and you're not used to Notion, as we build this out here in a minute, you'll see how this all works. Lastly, we have the docs database. Now, this is where I spend about 99% of my time. Here inside the docs database, we have the name of the document, the type of document, which is a multi-select field, so you can create different document types, so you can easily organize those. We link this document to a project, and projects are already linked to a specific company, so it will just look up and tell you which company that project's associated with. Lastly, we have an archive checkbox. I can just click this to take it out of all my main views once I'm done with the document entirely. Now, of course, this doesn't delete it. It just puts it off into another view so it doesn't clutter up my workspace. That's another big key in having all this set up inside of Notion is I can easily take things out of view that I know I don't need to look at anymore, but I'm not risking deleting it and never having access to it again. Another powerful feature of keeping all this inside of databases in Notion is I can create different views. So here you can see all of my active documents, but if I archive one, it disappears. It actually goes into this archive view where you can see only documents that are archived. Now all of this is set up through different filters you can set up here inside these databases, which we will tackle in a second. Of course, I can unarchive that and it will go back to all my active posts. Here I have another view of just all my internal projects. So this would just be for the projects for my companies. I have another view for client projects. So we're just looking at client projects and you can set up as many views as you need. So you might set up views for things like the most recently created documents or the most recently edited, or you could even set up views that only show you certain document types. Really there's tons of ways you can sort and filter all this information. And that's what makes it so much more organized than what I was dealing with in Google Docs. 
Now when we open up a document, you can see it has the properties at the top of the document. This will just show if it's archived, the company name, the time it was created, all the different properties we created about this document. You can minimize all this information. You can also rearrange it however you need, but I find this really handy to easily be able to take a glance at a document and know exactly what I'm looking at. You also have the ability here to add all kinds of different blocks to your document. So if I just type a forward slash here, you'll see all the blocks that are included in Notion. We have text, we can create sub pages, pages nested inside of pages, to-do lists, different heading levels, tables, bulleted lists, numbered lists, toggle list, quotes, dividers, the list goes on and on. There are tons of things, including embedding videos, which I found really handy for creating SOPs where I can embed a video that plays right inside of my document. There's just so many rich features inside of Notion that aren't available inside Google Docs. It's another huge point for using Notion for these kind of word processor type things. We do have the ability to share this document. We can share and invite certain people to it, or we can publish this live on the web. If we hit publish to web, we have the ability to allow editing, allow comments, or allow people to duplicate this. All of those are included here in the free plan. Now, people do have to sign up and register with Notion to be able to edit or comment on documents. So some people do find that process a little bit cumbersome. If you're trying to get clients in here to edit some of the documents or collaborate with you, I try to avoid that as much as possible, but I have had clients successfully been able to come in and edit documents with me. Of course, like I said, I'm trying to keep all of this really simple, but I also want it to be practical as well. The reason I'm setting up three different databases in here and then relating all this information is just to keep things really organized. If I go into my company's database, not only can I see all the projects that are related with this company, but I can also see all the docs that are related with this company. Now think about the ways this might be useful. If you can remember you did a doc for a specific customer or on a specific project, but you don't remember the name of it or what might have been in it, where the search isn't gonna come in handy, it's really nice to be able to come in here and just see all the projects for a specific customer or all the docs for a specific project or customer. The last feature I wanna to touch on in this little demo is the templating feature, and this is absolutely huge. So here under the new button, there's a drop-down link where we can create a new template or pick from one of our existing templates. So let me show you an existing template I already set up. This is my SOP template. So essentially what I wanna do is have a good starting place for every SOP document. So in this template, I've gone ahead and set up a heading that says purpose, one that says outcome, procedures, and assets. This way I already have the headings already set up and a fill in the blank style document to get me started and make sure that all of these SOP documents are consistent. What's nice about this is you set up the template in one place. Anytime I wanna create a new doc, I just press the little down arrow and click on SOP template. This will automatically bring my template in and everything's already organized and ready to go. This is a great way to make sure to keep things consistent, but to also save a ton of time, not having to redo all this setup or open old documents to copy and paste formatting only to delete out all the content. All right, now that I've given you a quick whistle stop tour of how everything's set up inside of my Notion workspace, I wanna go through the process of creating the entire thing from scratch. I opted to not just give you a clone of my workspace because I think it's really important to fully understand how all this works and how it's all linked together. And you'll get a very clear understanding of that if you just set it up at least one time. As you can see by how much time is left in this video, it's not gonna take us very long to do, and I think it's gonna be well worth the investment if this is something you're actually gonna use in the future. Okay, what we're starting with here is a completely blank, empty workspace from Notion. Now, when you create your first workspace, it is gonna come with some default pages. I've just deleted all those out so we can start completely fresh. The first thing we need to do is set up our homepage and our three databases. So here, I'm just gonna call this home. I do like to add an icon. It makes it a little bit funner to look at. And then we're gonna create this as an empty page. So the quick way to use this is to just type the forward slash, which is going to bring you up the inserter here, and we're going to search for database. Now you have two different options here, and what we want is a full page database. So we're going to go ahead and click full page, and this one we're going to call companies. We'll go ahead and add an icon here, and we can change it to a office building of some sort. We'll change it to that, and we'll go back to our home page. Here, we're gonna go ahead and type the forward slash again and add a new full page database. We'll call this projects. We'll add an icon and this time maybe we'll do a briefcase. And we'll go back to our homepage one last time, forward slash database, create a full page. And this one we're gonna call docs. Again, an icon and we'll go with this notebook. 
So here on our homepage, we have the basic setup for the structure of how this is gonna work. Now we need to create all the properties that are gonna be associated with each one of these databases. It's really simple to do. So here inside the companies, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this default tags property it brings in. Of course, we do want the name. So the only thing I'm gonna to add to this one is to add a select field, which is gonna allow me to select whether this is an internal project or a client project. So I'm just gonna call this internal slash client because I'm not very creative this morning. And we'll give it two options, internal or client. Now, of course, you can go through here and change the colors and make this fancy, but you get the point here. All right, so now we need to jump back in here and create the fields for our projects. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this default tags one. We don't need that. And all we need inside the projects is to link this to the companies. So to do that, we're gonna click this plus button and we're gonna use the relation field. So down here in the bottom right corner, we're gonna click relation and we're gonna click a relationship to companies. So here, the relationship to companies has a limit, we want to limit these projects to only be applied to one company. So a project can only be assigned to one company, but we're gonna go into the company's database and make sure that the company can be assigned multiple projects. So here we'll just change this to one page and show on companies, we're gonna go ahead and turn that on. So that way the reverse of this relationship will show inside the company's database. We'll go ahead and hit add relation. We can see now that companies is showing up. And if we jump back in here to companies, we can see projects is showing up. Now I do wanna double check here that I can assign multiple projects to a company. So I'm gonna click here and click edit property. And we can see that the limit is by default set to no limit. So this is set up that one company can have multiple projects, but a project can only have one company it's assigned to. Now we need to go set up the extra properties inside the documents, which is gonna take a little bit more work. So what I have inside of mine, first is a multi-select field for the document type. So we'll just call this doc type and we can add our options. This might be like SOP, website content, emails, uh, email scripts, blog posts, social media posts. You get the idea. You could add all the different types of documents that you regularly create here. I know my list has grown and evolved a little bit over time. So this gives us the ability to select the type of document this is gonna be. Now we need to relate this to a project. So what I'm gonna do is click the plus button again. I'm gonna go to the relation field and click that. And we're gonna relate this document to a project. So here I wanna limit the number of projects it can be linked to to one. And I also wanna make sure that these documents are shown inside of my project so that reverse relationship works as well. We're gonna go ahead and hit add relation. We can see projects is now showing up here. And if I go back into my projects, I can see docs is showing up. And if I edit that, I can see that it has no limit because of course every project might have multiple documents. All right, just a few more fields to set up here inside of our docs. I wanna have a checkbox for archiving. So we're gonna go ahead and search for checkbox and add that. We'll call this archive. And all we have to do here is check it on or leave it unchecked. And then I wanna create two properties that I'm actually gonna hide out of view, but will help me sort and filter things later. The first one is the time that this document was created. So if we scroll down here, we have created time. I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And now we'll get a column here that shows the time this document was created, which is really important if you wanna sort documents by when they were created. Sometimes that's the easiest way for me to find something and say, oh, I know I've created this recently, or to be able to show views where it only shows you your most recently created documents. Similarly, I'm gonna go ahead and add a new field here, and we're gonna do last edited time. So sometimes I might've created a doc months and months ago, but I'm looking for something that I was just editing or just working on recently. So being able to have this last edited time here available inside of my database is really important, but I don't really need to look at these things. So what we can do is just right click this column here and we can do hide in view. And I'll do the same here for the last edited time. Now let's go ahead and put in some dummy data in here. There's still a few tweaks we're gonna need to make as we build this system out, but I think it's gonna be a lot easier to see how that's working once we have some information in here. So if you give me just a second, I'm gonna add some companies, some projects, and some documents, and we'll show how they all work linked together. Okay, so I've gone ahead and put in some demo information. Let me show you around with what I did. So I put in three different companies. There's Client Alpha, which has been assigned as a client. There's Client Beta, which is also a client. And then My Agency, which is an internal project. Here inside the projects, I have three different projects. There's a website redesign for client alpha, an SEO campaign for client beta, and September promo for my agency. 
Lastly, here inside the docs, you can see we have website copy document that's a doc type of website content assigned to website redesign and a sitemap document that's assigned to website redesign. Remember, we're being able to create multiple documents and relate them to one project. We also have a keyword research doc that's assigned to the SEO campaign and an emails doc that's assigned to September promo. Let's go ahead and add a few more documents so you can see the process of how that works. We're also gonna see a problem in this setup and find the solution to it. So here, let's say for the September promo, we need to create another document where we're gonna have our social posts. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new line here and we'll say social post for the document type. I'm gonna change this to social post and I'm gonna assign this to the project. Now we can see here, we have all of these project names, but it doesn't show what company it's related to. Now, right now we only have a few projects in there, so it's pretty easy to figure out, but I imagine you're gonna do lots of website redesigns or lots of SEO campaigns, and a generic name like that isn't gonna be good enough. You're gonna need something that shows both the name of the project as well as the name of the company. So let's go ahead and set that up. What we're gonna do is add another field here, and the kind of field we're gonna look for is a roll-up field. So I'll go ahead and click on roll up here and we'll name this company. Now the relationship here is going to be with our projects. The property is going to be companies and it's just gonna show original, which is gonna show the name. So essentially what we're doing here is looking up which company this project is related to. So now we can see the project name here and it's pulling in which company that's assigned to. So we can go ahead and rearrange this here. I do like to see those next to each other. But when we click this, we're still not seeing that relationship down here. All we need to do to enable that is to click these three dots. And here where it says companies, let's go ahead and click the little I. And now we can see the SEO campaign for client beta, the website redesign for client alpha, and the September promo for my agency. Now in this case, these social posts are for my agency for September's promo. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that and it will add that property here under projects and automatically pull in the company, which is my agency. All of this, of course, ensures that you're assigning the right documents to the right project, to the right company, and it's all part of this organization process. Now, of course, we're going through this a little slow because we are assigning everything and setting things up for the first time, but I promise you, after you've done this a couple times, you're gonna fly through this process. You never need to do all this setup again, so adding a new document is basically as easy as clicking new and assigning it to a project. All right, next thing up, let's talk about creating different views. Views are a really important part of this organization process because we can create different ways to look at our data. So by default, this table is just called table. I would probably wanna rename that to something like all docs and that will go ahead and rename this. But we can create as many different views as we'd like. So let's go ahead and show this process and how we can create different filters and sorting capabilities inside of each view. For example, here in the all docs, I do want it to be all of my docs, but I don't want it to be my archive docs. I'm gonna create a special view that only shows archive docs. So I need to go ahead and create a filter now on this all docs view to go ahead and get rid of anything that has been archived. To do that, I'll just click the filter button here and we're gonna filter this by the archive property. So here, what we wanna show is all the documents that have the archive button unchecked. So now we can see that this is showing all the ones that are unchecked, but as soon as I check one, it goes away. Now, of course, I need to create a view where I can see all the archived ones in case I need to access those or unarchive them. So to do that, we just need to create a new view. I'm gonna go ahead and click on this plus button here, and we can see by default, it says new view. Here, I'm gonna call this archived and press done. Now what we need to do is just create a filter that's only gonna show the ones that are checked. So just like we did before, we're gonna create filter, we're gonna click on archived, but this time we're gonna select when they're checked. So now this view is showing only the archived documents and this view is only showing the unarchived documents. If I uncheck this, that document will go right back in here into this view. Now there are tons of examples of different ways you could create views and sort and filter this information. We're not gonna go through all the possibilities here, but I'll show you another one that I like to include. So here I'll go ahead and create a new view. We're gonna call this recent docs and hit done. And we're gonna sort this by the created time and we're gonna change it to descending. This is gonna make it so the documents that were created most recently are at the very top of the list and the oldest documents are at the bottom. Another view you might wanna create, we'll go ahead and create this and we'll say doc type and we'll go ahead and hit done. And this one, we're going to filter it and we're gonna filter it by the document type. And we'll say, maybe this is social post. 
So for this view, we might actually want to change this name to social posts. And that way we can have a view that's set up that only shows us that specific type of document. So there are all kinds of different ways you can set this up. You can do a combination of filters and sorting on each of these. So you can create views that make the most sense for things you're looking for most often. Next, let's talk about setting up a template. It's actually really easy to do. So here under the new button, we're just gonna click the drop down arrow and we're gonna click new template. This template that we're gonna set up is our SOP documentation. And here where the document starts, I'm just gonna paste in something I've already created so you don't have to see me going through the process of adding all these blocks to the page. So here I've basically created the skeleton of what I want all my SOPs to follow. So now that I've got that set up, I can close this out. And now when I press a new document, I have the option to pull this from a template. I can either have a blank document or SOP documentation. You have that available inside this dropdown, or if you just press new, you'll see that it has this shown at the bottom where we can create this from a template or from an empty box. There's no limit to the amount of templates you can create, so you can go ahead and create all the different types of documents and have all that foundational work already done for you. I'm telling you, this saves you a ton of time. Now, one thing I notice is when I open any of these documents, it's actually opening them up over in the side, which is what they call the side peak. I don't prefer this for when I'm opening up a document I actually want to work on it. So we can change that default behavior. Here inside this view, I'm just going to click on the three dots here and go to layout. And here under open pages in, I'm going to change this to full page. Now I can close that out. And when I open up a document, it's just going to open up that document in the full page. I like this experience better. There are several different ways you can do this. You can also have it open up in a little pop-up, that side peak or this full page. So you'll have to figure out in which use case you want to use those different kind of views. You can set up those defaults one time, and of course it will default to your preference. Okay, the last thing I wanna show you how you can do, because I think it's super powerful here inside Notion, is either interlinking between different documents or creating subpages within pages. So the first thing we'll look at is creating subpages. Let's say here in this sitemap and research page, I wanna create some pages that are nested within this. I want a page that's just for the sitemap and another one for research. So inside here, I can type forward slash page and create a subpage inside this page. So we'll call this sitemap. And here I'll just put in some lorem ipsum. We'll go back to the main document and we can see this is linked now to the sitemap. I can go ahead and create another inner page and this one we'll call research and we'll put some lorem ipsum in here as well. So you still have the ability to add any content you want inside this document. So I can still add all kinds of different things and organize things however I want, but I have these sub pages nested inside of this page. Why I like this is because sometimes these documents don't make any sense on their own without context. So this is really handy when a document is only gonna make sense inside the context of another document. Here inside the sitemap and research, obviously we have a page just for the sitemap and a page just for the research. These aren't gonna show up in your main docs folder because they're nested pages. I find that to be really handy when something only needs to be associated with a specific document. However, there are instances where you do want to link between different documents inside your database. Let's take a look at an example of one of those instances and I'll show you exactly how you can link between different documents. Here in the September promo for my agency, I have a list of emails and a list of social posts. Inside of each one of these emails, I might want to reference the social posts that I'm talking about inside the email. So to do that, I'll just open up this emails document. You can see I've already set up email one and email two. And now I wanna reference the social posts that I've created that go along with each one of these emails. So to do that, I'll just go on another line here, press the forward slash, and I'm gonna do link to an existing page. Here, I can go ahead and start searching. So we might search for social since I know it's my social posts. Once I click that, I have the ability to click on social posts. It will take me back over to that social post. We can see that there's one backlink to this document. We can click that and we can see exactly what's linked to this document. So this is a really interesting way to be able to link things between documents when they have some kind of relationship. I find that there's a lot of instances where I use this and I'll often create a template that has a sidebar that shows just any linked properties or any assets that might be related to the document we're working on. Of course, you're gonna to wanna to create a system that makes sense for you, but this is definitely a handy feature. Like I said at the beginning of the video, this really only scratches the surface of what's capable inside of Notion. There are a whole lot of different things you can accomplish inside of this software. 
Now for me, I'm not trying to create a project management system or track things above and beyond just these documents. So what I've created here is a very specific use case to just replace Google Docs with Notion. Now, of course, there are a few more goodies I threw in there because I think it makes sorting and filtering and finding and relating all this data a little bit easier. But for the most part, all I'm doing inside this Notion workspace is creating a replacement for Google Docs. If you want to check out more things you can do inside of Notion, I'll link a few channels that I learned a lot from in this process as I got started with Notion, as there's a lot of different things you can explore. Now, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you know most of the time I'm creating content on Generate Press and Generate Blocks, but if you enjoyed me stepping out of that scene a little bit and talking about something different, I'd love to know about that down in the comments below. If you'd like to join in on the conversation, there's a link to join our community down below in the video description. And if you hit subscribe, YouTube will notify you the next time I put a video out. We'll catch you on that one.